Ah, okay. Ah, Valerie, here you are. How are you doing? You're on mute. Okay, I then think we should just start. Welcome to this webinar. It's about the power of the human factor unlocking product potential. Um, hello, Oliver. Hi, Valerie, how are you doing? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. And uh, welcome you at another webinar of the Matriz Official Series. Uh, and uh, today, I'm happy to introduce Dr. Oliver Meyer, Matriz Master. And um, uh, currently, he works with Bayern Innovative. It's a company in Germany. And Oliver has a large track with trees. So um, his uh, topic of his presentation is the power of human factor unlocking product potential. Uh, our webinar will last exactly one hour. Uh, 40 minutes will be dedicated by the talk of Oliver and 20 minutes will be dedicated to answers to your questions. Um, I'm familiar, I, I'm, I'm sure that uh, most of you are familiar how to work with Zoom. You can use chat chat window to type your questions during all the talk of Dr. Oliver. So you need, don't need to wait before he ends. Uh, if you have question which emerges during his presentation, simply type in in a chat window. Okay, Dr. Oliver, Dr. Empire, <laughs> Dr. Oliver, the floor is yours. Please start your presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Valerie, for your introduction. I'm happy that I can give you that presentation. The power of the human factor unlocking product potential. Um, as Valerie already said, um, I've been working with General Electric Company for several years, 15 in total, working with energy and innovation methodology. And today I'm with Bayern Innovativ which is a company that is dedicated to help small and medium-sized enterprises to introduce innovation methodologies. Um, so I'm very much uh, with uh, trees and helping them how to apply this. And one of these points is a topic I'm gonna to talk about today. As now it needs to work. Yeah, you all know uh, with Altular, the trends for engineering system evolution have been developed which is um, about a product, about a hardware. How does it evolve over time? We have there some parameters like shape, like materials, like rhythm to synchronize them. And um, several years ago, I'm not sure how much it was exactly. It was Alex Lubomirsky who said, well, there might be also a coordination of images. And out of that idea, that uh, you can also coordinate images like you see here below um, with uh, these set devices or satellite antenna, which is just uh, put in the same uh, colors and the same uh, uh, looking like the wall behind, so it's disguised. The question arises: what about the other senses? Um, the point is, I'm have since we started then with, with our five senses. I know there are discussion about whether it's only five or is there more, but let's start with the ones that we normally are learning at school, which is uh, seeing, the optical one, the acoustic, olfactory, kinesthetic, and tasting. These are the five basic senses. You might take also equilibrium, uh, equilibrium uh, sense with it or others, but let's uh, stick on these five mostly common known senses. And the question is, shall they also be coordinated? Is there a law behind? Is there some systematic one should think about? And what could think about also with the trends that it is devoted to this? So asking this question, it first led, of course, uh, to identify if there's a trend to increase the addressing of human senses. 
And then you find out, okay, there's not only a trend to increase it, but there are two ways that it can be. First, improves the impact of a sense itself. And there are two directions, more pleasant, more likely, or dislike unpleasant. If you see, um, for example, perfume, yeah, perfume, would you say this is a, a change or a, an improvement towards well smelling uh, versus the other would be bad smelling uh, in that case. So, so we have neutral and we have these two directions. So is there improvement? The next question was, uh, can there also be a uh, combination of senses? Does it only be only one, like we had in, in the visible senses? Would it be only then for for hearing or whatever, or are there combination? Or could it also be that you can remove one sense, trim one sense in order to generate impact? So if you might uh, talk to a blind person or whatever, he would say, of course, uh, I cannot see, but therefore my other senses are working much more, much better. And they are totally different uh, uh, ways of, of impact that I, one is generating for this. So, out of these first, yeah, a little bit chaotic thoughts, what could be, what is there, um, there were identified two hypotheses. First of all, uh, intensify a sense, pleasant or unpleasant, uh, in a way, um, so for one. And the other is address more senses in parallel to combine them. So there are two ways that you can think about uh, um, unlocking the power of senses, combination of senses. So if we're looking now in the parameters that are there, because we don't just want to say we want to make it better or worse, we're looking in parameters for the senses. Let's take the acoustic sense, what we have here. What are the parameters? It's the amplitude um, of the impact, visibility, hearability of that, the coordination of frequencies, that's the pleasance. So if we're, we're making music, that's a coordination of frequency. If you want that one, then we have uh, the dynamization, constant amplitude, changing amplitude, one frequency. So these are the common ways that I'm looking also for uh, normal trends. I see ways on how these uh, senses can be influenced or can have a different impact and the effect on pleasance and unpleasant in a general, it's, it's depending on the human being, how it feels, of course, but these are, if you want, applying the existing trends of evolution on this topic. The same you can do with the kinesthetics, yeah? size, weight, surface, temperature, pressure, what you feel here, constant temperature, changing temperature, constant uh, pressure. Where interestingly wise, there are also two effects. First of all, it can just be an information or, um, if you define it now, pain is as well an information, but it is a uh, information with a direction, saying uh, it hurt and it's unpleasant uh, uh, in a way. If you, what in terms of a function, a harmful function. If you want. The next part is of course tasting: sweet, salt, uh, salty, sour, bitter, and umami, which is a relatively new sense here uh, as well. And uh, here we have the combination of these parameters. They're all on one area and your mouth and the combination of them uh, uh, is a di dynamization, not only to see something sweet or bitter. And if you know food, it is always about how to combine these uh, parameters again to make pleasant or unpleasant feeling or if you want convenient food that you're used to or exotic food, exotic food that you're not uh, uh, used to. And the olfactory, um, which is concentration of order and the type of selection. So the flowers, flavors uh, that you have here, again, combination of odors and concentration. So it can easily first this table, if you, if you characterize all of this, uh, serve as an indicator how a sense can be impacted. First, we have a parameter in what is uh, the result if you use it. It can also be used as a morphological box, combine arbitrary senses, say what happens if I combining them. Um, that is also another use, but it's also the basic to see how can we 
in a systematic with trees um, go further ahead for this. So the first uh, uh, question, uh, if you, you want to identify the visibility of a sense, is for whom does the sense exist and how well is it trained? Because we know also that kids can hear frequencies much higher, wider range than an adult or an old person can do. So there's a variability, variability uh, as well here in the age of a human being. You can also, of course, transfer this always not only to a human being, but also to an animal. There you have uh, even wider ranges uh, of frequencies or effects uh, that can be here. Yeah? Uh, you see, for example, a cook also feels less pain from temperatures than a normal person because he's much more used to and his body has adapted to higher temperature. Touching is uh, uh, more developed for blind persons. Persons, when they're feeling a, a face or whatever, I cannot do if I'm tapping a face, I could not tell you who it is, but the blinds can do because they're much more trained and uh, uh, synchronized and, and sensitized uh, for this. Uh, another example are sommeliers that then can, can, can taste wine differences much better than ordinary people do, or a munitions that will hear more colors of an instrument than an ordinary person. Yeah? Or a painter sees more color nuances than maybe a normal one does. So there we have uh, already also a, a, a parameter in how uh, can you de uh, detect it. If, if I want to address your more senses, I always have to think about who is the target, what is the target, and what are the parameters of the target in that question. And the second question is to define the direction of involvement. What shall be achieved? Pleasance, unpleasance, dividing? Shall the sense be enforced? And if yes, in what direction? So as an example for, for the thinking, a shopping mall is an interesting area for kids that don't know what to do. Yeah? Kids in group hanging around are not well received by the merchants. Yeah? Um, a solution that was there was in, in the mall in the US uh, where kids hanged around and uh, on the parking lots and the merchant didn't like it because uh, normal customers didn't come anymore because they were frightened or felt insecure because of these kids. So kids don't like so much classic music, elder people often do. And kids can hear higher frequency, elder people don't do. So the solution that they made at that part, it was with uh, trees, is uh, to play music on that parking lot. Uh, yeah, with better higher frequency and classic music. No pop or rock or rap or I don't know what. And by this, the interesting thing was uh, that uh, over time, uh, the kids disappeared because it was not very pleasant to them at least, yeah. Or at a cruise ship, younger people want to party without elder people, what they're doing? Loud music, flashing lights. Normally you have right away a separation then that the elder people uh, will move. Or another way, uh, also if you have the visual uh, um, uh, part, is in different fashion. And uh, for those who are parents, I know as a kid, you. you dress differently and uh, to a little bit provoke also your parents. And now that you're uh, a father or a mother, your kids will do the same for you. So if we're talking about the intensification of one sense, remember this was the hypothesis number one, I'm dealing with one sense. Then I have here uh, 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 the sensor, the different senses and the parameter loudness, Harmony, olfactory is intensity, it's combination of flavors, taste is the five, in parentheses, six taste senses, temperature, kinesthetic is the surface, the pain, the surface vibrations. And here I can also improve presence uh, from too silent to louder. Yeah? In a car, the entertainment system, for example, adjusts loudness to the environment situation, improve presence. So this is a combination of looking at what parameter is changing, surrounding sound, so you increase the sound of the pleasant music to adopt it. Uh, change of direction and the political demonstration, the speaker is overruled by protesting party with whistles. This can be seen as a camouflage, move to unpleasant, if you want, this is disguised. 
We have here the olfactory with higher density, put perfume on the body to improve the good smell, improving pleasance, add odor to a gas to detect leakage, improvement of unpleasant. So if it smells, you say, oh, oh there's a leakage, because it might be dangerous, yeah? Or take chewing gum to camouflage bad mouth odor. All possibilities where I can say, where do I want to move the sense? Improvement in the pleasance or in unpleasance? You have the same for olfactory, the 12 basic flowers of a perfume, heart, head, and soil, with each of these three parts having four under uh, uh, constructions of flavors. Who's interesting uh, in that one, there's a nice book existing, the Perf perfume, um, which, uh, which is a story uh, of the Middle Ages and how perfume was done. There's very well explained uh, to the guy, Grenouille, it's tasted. So if you want to read the book, it's also in English available. Then taste, spices for one or more taste senses. Yeah. Or the other one, what you have, hot coffee with an ice cream. Yeah. If it's too hot, you cool it down with an ice cream, you make it also optimize the best pleasance. In kinesthetics, we had this already, closed from linen to cotton to wool, make it more uh, likely for, for the skin or razor wire or glass pieces on top of a wall to prevent surpassing. There we have also kinesthetic, you move to it, you will hurt yourself, you don't do it. Or um, another way of transferring music by vibrations on the skin. By the way, also uh, things that uh, um, people who are thumb um, often feel, or they like loud bass music uh, because they feel the vibrations and by this they can follow the music. So what I have displayed here is an example for a, a, a impact of a sense. So if you're looking at the history of horns, yeah, for, for uh, emergency or police or fire brigade, or uh, I don't know, you have there two things. It's even a combination. First, you had here a whistle or a horn that was blown. Then it was combined it, then uh, whistle and horn was put to two sounds. Yeah, in Germany we still have two sounds. Do, 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 do. If you're going to US or more, lots of under, uh, uh, other countries, you have gradient sound, which is changing uh, if you want the, the frequency or dynamic. Random, that's what the US guys are like, uh, all kinds of sounds mixed up in order to create impact. impact. Um, this is what we have today. Um, and if we're processing this also in the trends, it's what I always draw here with, with this uh, barrier saying, how could the future look like? Well, it may be that it's not anymore a dynamic gradient, but to, uh, that the next thing will be that you get a personal warning and sound on your smartphone. Yeah, it's not generalized, but locally um, uh, uh, on your smartphone. The other thing, there's also another uh, um, uh, sense that is a visual sense. So one added here a light or just a light by, by, by some firelight. Okay, you saw the horn, there's a light also. Then you added color. And um, the interesting thing is that one had different colors. Generally, it's blue and uh, red um, and yellow, what you have. The blue color, by the way, was used uh, or developed mostly in World War II times, World War I and World War II. And the reason for it was that blue light is much harder to detect from uh, elevated positions. Or if you're in an airplane attacking enemy, uh, it was much harder to see a blinking black light, uh, blue light than a blinking red light. That's why it is common to use for uh, these emergency stuff, blue lights, uh, just a remedy of uh, world war things. And that you don't have only one color, but you're using flashing, dynamization of you. Um, here as well, and for on the smartphone could be the future. What is interesting was these two sensors, these are the sensors for distance. Yeah. So to get on distance, we have two sensors for distance, that's hearing, 
and that seeing, and then you have uh, uh, senses with that are nearby. So that's the olfactory, that's the kinetics um, uh, uh, sense um, uh, that you feel there. So the third question was about combining senses. Does the addressing of one sense, including dynamization, solve the problem, or is a combination with other senses an alternative, add-on, or easier? What shall be achieved? Again, the question, pleasant, unpleasant dividing, which sense will be added, in what direction, or shall a sense be deleted? These are the questions that are arriving then if, you, if you're talking about such a, a question. So I'm normally making a, a hypothesis and I say, what does it mean? What could be combinations? Where do I stand to get a feeling for that one? And then out of that, they arrive uh, um, uh, 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 rule in that one. So for example, if you see here a rail road crossing, yeah, you find an optical signal that is here, yeah, and it is dynamized, it's pulsed uh, with a red light to enforce it. Then there is a sound occurring, ding, 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 ding. And you have even here a barrier, again, with an optical signal, the uh, red and uh, uh, white. So there are lots of, 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 of uh, senses combined. Even on the road, maybe you put uh, the underground a little bit roughed up that if you're driving there, your, your car is a little bit vibrating, so you feel that there's also, all in order to attract uh, uh, the attention um, uh, on you. Another example here is a predictive uh, example is a birthday card. So you start your visual birthday card, very simple. And then next thing you add a sound, yeah, that if you open it, you can hear something. Then you can dynamize 2D, so it's unfolding, yeah, that you have a, a not only flame, but 2D, add an odor. So if you're opening, you're smelling something. So here you're combining already several senses going up. Kinesthetics, three card foldable uh, card, and um, yeah, there's uh, the gustatory part uh, missing. So why not making, in terms of being sustainable, also an eatable card? Might be the future, perhaps, right? Another example for removing a sense, dinner in the dark. It's uh, trimming. Uh, do a dinner, and already you see what we eat. And there are restaurants who said, hey, um, can we change something yeah? can we, about the senses that we have here? Here was lunch dinner, then uh, you, uh, uh, First was to, to change the optical layout that is also good looking. It's not only good tasting, it's good looking. Even first you have the good looking, then you go to the uh, um, good tasting. You uh, composite it with a, a, a composition, the olfactory. Maybe you combine it with music that is running in your restaurant. Yeah? And then at the end, uh, skin, uh, kinetics, you, you're going up in, um, in the sky. Where people are sitting here, lying on a balloon and eating in the free air. So you, you have also a feeling of them. That's the idea of uh, um, changing or changing the senses. And as I said, one can also always about thinking, can I delete something? Can I take it out, trim it? And if you're looking at the prediction that the future could be, uh, this is of course uh, quite hard to do. You have to sit there, you have to make it fly, you have to look for security, but maybe it will come with a virtual reality that you get some glasses, some earphones on, and that you get there the uh, impression on, on, on what to do. So having uh, said that and given you some, some example of this, uh, what is the meta algorithm for increasing adjusting of human senses? So first of all, uh, uh, the, the question is, uh, what is the human senses that the uh, engineering system addresses? That's the first, there's one sense that is usually, at least one sense addressed with What is the one? Then decide whether the sense shall be intensified in direction of pleasant or unpleasant, or if another sense shall be added. There's these two directions. You can, of course, also say, okay, I intensify in the next and I add another one. But principally, these are two directions. 
In case of addressing the sense itself, apply the rules of the trends of coordination. In case of addressing another sense, select the right sense to add or to remove. And how this shall be done will be on the next slide. Yeah. And then repeat the procedure if necessary or needed or wished. That is just a uh, way to go through. And as I said, um, combination of different senses, the question is how to combine them. Usually, as I said, we have a more conscious senses and the distant senses, that is seeing and hearing. And the more unconscious senses and nearby senses are feeling, uh, uh, olfactory and tasting. So usually when you have identified the one sense that is addressed by the engineering system, say, okay, it's visual, then you're looking for a more unconscious sense to add. Now, change it, the, the, the area here. If you have one of this, one of this, you can freely decide, but usually you tr try to keep it in balance. That makes sense. Identify the human senses, the engineering system addresses, identify the need of development, again, pleasant or unpleasant, and add the lead sense from the other side, and then add more senses if needed. Now we have in professional and business two situations. We have the uh, uh, business to client and the business to business application. And when I'm thinking about an engineering system and uh, addressing senses, uh, one has of course to consider different situations. Is the end customer an end user? So business to customer. In this case, the product is sold over emotion and functionality of it. So there's lots of emotionality in there. If it is a B2B uh, system, business to business, the life stage of a product has to be considered and its usage. For example, the motor of a car, a car will user will nearly never get in touch with the motor itself. In business to business, there are stages where the motor is minded by a person. Their needs and requirements of the working task has to be considered. Yeah? So the motor itself, to say how is it addressed to the final customer or driver is of no interest. But how the motor is addressing senses for the guy who's mounting it into the car or on a ship or whatever, that is of interest. So the context of what kind of person is addressing it is of relevance. Um, and the assumption that for a guy who's mounting the engine, the looking is not so relevant as that is easy but handleable is uh, really obvious. Although you can say, yeah, for a guy who buys a car, he wants to open uh, the car trunk and see, hey, is it good looking? What is inside here? Does it show how much power I have or whatever? So there might be different uh, um, um, application. And as I said, and I say it once again, you can also apply all these rules to animals. But there consider that animals normally have totally different parameters in their senses than a human being has. For example, bird very often can see an ultraviolet, which we cannot. The, if you have a spider net, a bird will never fl fly through because spider nets are reflecting UV light, which we cannot see. That's why we're tapping in. Birds can see. They shall, also from, so from the spider's perspective, they shall not uh, fly through the net. They just want the insects to be in the net, not the birds, because the birds would destroy it. Here also an, 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 an example for this part. Uh, we have here a CRT as a, a computer, uh, so, so, um, uh, magnet resonance uh, uh, inspection. Uh, this is how this machine looks like. It's very noisy, you know, it's not very pleasant in here. And especially when you have kids, often they don't want to go in there as a suspect. And um, we have looked at this and said, how can we do it more pleasant? What, what senses are, are addressed to? Here's addressed the sound, the smell, yeah, the smell, technical, it is uh, not a, you have the temperature of the room. And what we did, we said, okay, what other senses can we address? And it was colored, it was made like a cave. Yeah, and you're putting here in a cave in there with different uh, visuals in there. The sound was changed. 
uh, in that part. Uh, so these are ways where we address the senses of kids differently, and they were interested. It was much easier to get them into uh, um, such a machine uh, than if you had uh, the, the upper one. Yeah. Addressing of senses, also with the with the smellings or factory, uh, we worked on that. Said uh, for uh, kids that are very stressed uh, that at home. The mother should spread a certain perfume, uh, and especially always that time that uh, the mother was playing, was having a hearty time with her kid, and then in the hospital the same perfume was sprayed, and it rebuilt for the kid the situation. It's cozy here, it's nice, uh, just by the emotion that the the sense uh, worked on them. Or another uh, part is uh, uh, here application at the kindergarten, these FEMO toys, where you can construct your own uh, little animal or piece or whatever in different color. It's uh, you're feeling the kinetics of the part. You can even eat the stuff. Is, is stuff it is not poisoned any, anymore. Still, um, what one is doing because you don't want kids to eat it that you put there some tastes that it's not 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 very nice to 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 bite in there it doesn't have anything happens but as you don't want it you put there in a bad taste like you do it for example the gas and the odor here are other examples for the combination of senses police car and fire brigade it's visual and sound Dinner in the dark from visual to taste to non-visual taste. They even be removed one. I had this already. Advertisement from only smelling, smelling, visual, sound. We add more uh, stuff to it. 4D cinema, visual and hearing, visual, hearing, smelling, meantime touching, you know, when you get sprayed water in there or air, uh, addressing more senses. And what is the Let's say the biggest part in, in, in uh, addressing senses, these are fun parts. Yeah? Here, by the way, you see this uh, 4D or 3D movie where you see a shark coming, or seems like a shark has come into the parts and then these chairs are moving. So in fun parts, you uh, try to address all senses and all variation uh, that are possible. The combination of visual light, hearing, using, touching, labyrinth, smell, tasting, food, everything. <coughs> or pop concerts. Former times it was just the people singing, you hear something, then came visual, the show, and today also with food, you have a good feeling. Now, if I know that I can address more senses, I can use this also for prediction, of course. Because that's the sense also of trends of engineering system evolution. And if you know these effects that you uh, can address more senses, how to combine them, you can also say, I do an analysis for my system and I can predict what is missing. Where should the story go to? Maybe. For example, here's a soap. If you're looking, a soap is very old stuff. Then one added perfume. Then came here uh, the visual that you, you look for a good packaging that it's good looking like. You change the form, maybe also visual or kinetics as well. Yeah. Then you put here sizzling ingredients, have an, uh, another uh, uh, auditory aspect, and felt for cleaning that you have felt, and then you put also the soap in. So, what's this part? What you're seeing here is that the gustatory is missing. So, from the theory that you address more and more senses, you would say, hey, how can I do something like this? And this was done, and the prediction would be, can I put into the soap a toy, a content if you want? For those who know Kinderüberraschung, that's exactly the principle, where they have a little toy and around there's chocolate, yeah, or you put in a sweet, um, and this could be, for example, also for kids motivating to wash more often their hands. The more they wash their hands, the faster they get to the sweets that they want to have. Um, what I made also is a, a test if this is working. Yeah. Okay, I have not the, I'm not in the, in the nutrition uh, industry, but still, it was on an ice plate. See, here you see they had lots of different types of ice yeah, here, what you can have here. 
And uh, what we did, we, we analyzed, uh, asked the guy, who had to pay a little bit, analyzed what is the ice cream selling look like? What, what, uh, on what days, uh, how many do you sell and so on? And uh, then what we did is uh, just, just normally, under normal condition, and then we put here an odor, yeah? odor of one type of ice cream in there. And this odor was distributed here with a little fan beneath there. So you had that smell in your nose. And the question was, does the selling of ice change? And it did. That's what you, you're seeing here. And these are the different curves. So, so the days three, four, five, these were right and over the weekend. There you say ice selling went up. And here we saw this was a normal curve. And when we introduced the smelling, this curve went here up this way. So it has an impact, it can influence it. And that's, if you want an industry, advertisement industry, that's uh, taking care a lot, uh, of course, of this effect, but uh, maybe they're doing it a little more, more unconsciously. Uh, here we have a, a way of how to do it systematically and to systematically um, uh, think about it. So if I'm uh, uh, coming here to the conclusion, the novelty, the main focus is uh, uh, of the trends of engineering system is the development of the engineering it's, uh, system itself in its technical environment. But every engineering system has at some point an interface to a human being for which it is dedicated to act. And this object is subject to development as well. And uh, here I'm uh, suggesting to expand the trends of engineering system by giving a system automatic uh, approach on how to address the development of this interface, which by the way, uh, the development itself, it's already contained in the trends of engineering system with dynamization, what we had is adding with trimming. So the three tools applied, but on the example of a, of a certain viewpoint here with our senses. And uh, we live in a world where there's more and more action between engineering system and human being. So therefore, uh, this work um, is a, a, this is a meta parameter, meta algorithm, a way to easier find on where and what to work. And uh, it allows uh, the predictability, um, so reproducible uh, results uh, uh, for the future in order to see where the part is coming to. And here, this is a nice picture of uh, the Museum uh, of uh, Arts from the 17th centuries. The five senses, how they were displayed uh, uh, in museums at the former times. The art painting by Hans Markart, a very famous uh, picture from left to right, touching, hearing, tasting, smelling, and seeing uh, for the finalization. So by this, I say thank you very much for your attention. And if you have question, please feel free to go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Oliver, uh, for your very insightful presentation. And uh, I'm thinking, is uh, the trend of technical systems evolution uh, or a trend of uh, which you presented is more to technical systems evolution or business systems evolution. I would say both. You know, I hate the term engineering system because it was a very wrong translation from Russian language to English when we promoted trees. So I'm using the te term technical system. <laughs> okay, I, I take this. I take this. That's, uh, that's, yeah, I have all. Um, the, the, the point is in German, if you talk about an uh, uh, engineering system, translation would also be technical system. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so, I think so. Yeah, we, we talk about technical system, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I remember it I was in 1990s when we started to translate yeah. Russian trees to English, and uh, someone coined the term engineering system, and it's thick with that. <laughs> okay, there is a question from Christopher Mills. How do you suggest to systematically identify and measure the desired state of emotions resulting in human being? 
Science for clear explanation of the role and importance of an impact of senses in a product experiences. Thanks also for examples and your suggestion to including it to systematic framework. But the question starts in the first yeah. part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got it. Okay, you um, you exactly touched the weak point in that whole stuff. Um, because how to allocate emotions to our senses. There's a big system in between that's the AI, that's not the artificial intelligence, it's the analog intelligence, which is our education, our context or whatever. So for some people, and uh, you see this, for example, we take food, one says, ah, oh, this tastes extraordinary. And this says, no, this does not take extraordinary. This is so, I don't like it. So there we have a, a, a big range of what can happen if you address a sense, yeah? It is not given that um, with the same changing of, of, uh, of the sense or means of uh, changing it, you achieve the same emotion or the same pleasant unfeeling, uh, unpleasant feeling. That's an open point and I have just here to say, that's what you need to evaluate uh, and to see how are people reacting. Um, I mean, this is the same if, if you're, you're looking at, at this nice example of uh, uh, these ladies in Africa, there's a certain region where they have these rings around their, their neck and it's getting very high. People down there think that looks beautiful. I think that does not look beautiful. Um, the same information, yeah, but different ways of interpretation uh, due to the context that we are trained in there. So that's why I don't look allocate it to emotion, but just to the addressing of senses. And then you have to need to know upon culture, about experience, about country you're in there, what emotions this might create. Um, and I want to add that our perception of feelings is highly subjective. Yes. Yeah, like you said, one person might like something, but the other person doesn't like. Yeah. But I believe that uh, there is a, a distribution, like Gaussian distribution. Yes, like uh, uh, 100 persons might like oysters, but five persons might not like oysters. Yes, sir. M might, might this um, uh, uh, evaluation be based on Gaussian distribution? I'm not sure about this, Valerie, because, you know, the other thing is if you're looking, uh, let's take a product, existing product, car. We all know cars. Why are they existing so much different cars? Yeah. Um, I mean, I recall Henry Ford who was saying, uh, you know, you can have my, my Model T in any color as long as this is black. Um, this was one. But some people like black, others like gold, third one, red, blue, or whatever. That's how a market, of course, also then exists. Why are they existing so enormous amount of perfumes? Yeah. yeah. Because people think different. My wife and even me, we disagree. Still very uh, married to, uh, to her. And so there you see this different of your address. You're doing the same. You're addressing a sense, uh -huh. but you're generating a different impact. It uh, reminds me a story of Gladwell about American professor who was called to find a universal formula for ketchup, for Heinz ketchup, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and instead of finding a universal formula, they extended the product line from four ketchups to 32 ketchups. <laughs> yes. The point is, that is, here we are talking about one sense of one direction. But if I'm taking a perfume, let's go there again. In former times, it was just a perfume. Today, it's about how does the flacon look like? Yeah? How is it enveloped? So you're addressing visual senses and also touching senses. Yeah? How does the glass feel? Yeah. Glass feel. So, so that's about how to add more senses to make something uh, attractive. Yeah. And that's the same way that you're doing with uh, virtual reality. It's not only moving, it's feeling. And, and what is there still missing is uh, the uh, kinesthetic that yeah. you know you're in a in a virtual room. It's about seeing and hearing mostly, but you don't smell, don't taste. There's no kinetics, and that's if you 
analyzes uh, with the new uh, glasses also from Apple, where I'm assuming that the next step will be something where you get a, a second skin or something like that, or you should think yeah. about it if you want to develop, say that you get feelings. That if you're fighting in there, you can feel also the pain. Uh, that's not a new idea. If you're looking at uh, Star Trek, uh, there, there, are, there are some episodes, uh, or it was James Bond. James Bond was also one of those films where he fought against somebody else, and then he got also a, a pain shot when, when he lost in the game a battle. You just say, what's the matter? Yeah, you have also to feel it. Yeah. So that's the idea. Okay. Next question from Bin Han. Is there any evolutionary line or trend for human senses? If yes, is there any order for adding the sense for a system? Um, evolutionary line or trend for human senses? Um, or I can simply say, I don't know. The point is that we are born with these five senses. We see that these senses are degrading over time. It's getting older, they are degrading. Right. And that biology takes a long, long time to change their something. As I said, animals look different. For example, if you look deers, deers cannot see orange. Mm -hmm. They see it as green, brown. That's why you can wear on the hunting an orange jacket which other hunters will see you, but the deer will not see <laughs> So therefore, I don't see the evolutionary line. The point is, which sense to address is depending on what you want to achieve. <coughs> Excuse me. So normally, initially, you address one sense. And as I said, you can divide the senses into distant senses, which is seeing on a distance, hearing on a distance, and senses that are nearby. I mean, you will not taste the food when it's 50 meters away, but you will see it. You can also hear. <coughs> you will also smell. 50 meters might be quite far. It will be near distance. And feeling, touching is the same. It needs to be nearby. That's why I say the way on how senses are added. If you're far distance, you add a short distance sense. If you are at short distance, you add a far distance sense. That's normally the first thing to combine both, both areas, and then you can decide which furthermore senses to address. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Next question from Lixin1. In the view of function, how to define the function of these contents? Inform people in different way or happy people in different way? Oh. <laughs> so, the function that I'm doing here is inform. Um, that is the principle, it just informs you first. The second level I can do in this function analysis is then to see what is the impact, what is the result. And, and, and we need really to, to, to separate here the function yeah, and the effect. When it's the same as you're talking about a, a, a helmet, motor bicycle helmet, you would say the effect is protecting, but the function is something different to reduce acceleration, to spread impact over a wider face or whatever. So the function would be here to inform. And the question is then what have, or what is the effect that is standing behind? So I'm separating both of them. Thank you. Next question from Hemant Pardikar. A related area is aesthetics. Can you comment on trends in enhancing appeal of engineering system by improving aesthetics? Though uh, aesthetics involves senses and pleasance, it is considerably different. Perfect question. Um, you say aesthetics, I say design, because that's the point. How you design something might have an enormous impact on how a customer is re reacting here again. It's about differentiating between business to business, because I, uh, I found in business to business aesthetics or design, uh, if it's not a technical design but an optical design for the sense, it's much more irrelevant 
than design or aesthetics for an end customer. If it's for an end customer, he will look on that. And where we see this most is fashion. Yeah, there is all about aesthetics and all about design. The point is that um, it's very hard to find their general rules because the notion on how you feel or how you perceive something is very, very much depending on your culture, on your education, on the context that you're living uh, uh, in there. And if you're looking at how trends are set, let's take fashion trends at a school. Uh, my kids came and say, okay, I need now Nike uh, uh, sports shoes. I say, why do you need Nike sports? Yeah, because that's in, you know, that's, that's what he said. Who defined that this is in? I don't know, yeah, but everybody thinks it's in. You know, this is a, a, a different level of, of making a judgment, but what we can take away is what kind of, of effect or sense um, can be addressed, what, what the impact then is. That is something which, for example, and I am, I'm a fan of combining methods, would then go for design thinking and say, let's test this and see how the reaction is. Yeah? Does this sense work better or worse? Um, in its impact, not in that I'm adding. Yeah, I just add that here in the Netherlands, industrial design takes a very, very important role in the modern developments. In the, if I'm buying for a washing machine, you're a pump manufacturer. I'm a washing machine manufacturer. If I'm buying for you from you a pump that is built inside the washing machine where no customer at the end sees it, I don't think that industrial design, if it's looking like or whatever, is not the command. There, the, the command will be, okay, is it easy mountable? Mm -hmm. can, can, if I'm putting it, can I easily mount it? Can I dismantle it? Can I easily repair it? But not if it's good looking. Yes, uh, good look is just one of aspects of industrial yes, design. Yes, exactly. Yeah? If good looking is in that case, not because no, the end customer does not see it. If yeah. he sees it, then this optical part is important. But if I'm buying, and that's what I meant with business to customer and business to business, if I'm just mounting the inside, you know, let's take here, I have a, a keyboard. Yeah? I don't know how it's looking inside. I opened it once, it does not look very good, but it's operation and it's not of interest of me. But for the manufacturer of Logitech, he said, I want that it's easily mountable. That's not breaking, so, so, they are, so, so that uh, it can be mounted by one person, that he can handle it. You see, if I'm handling it here, this is too wide, if I would have to mount it. So this needs to be smaller pieces that are easier for me as a, a working guy mounting. And I'm also a human being, and my senses are also addressed. Can I have a look? Do I see it? Can I uh, see it right away that this is a part because it has a different color than all the rest of the part? Is this nice enough that I see right away where I can touch it, move it? So it would be uh, touching the part. Um, how does it smell? Um, maybe if there's a chemicals I don't want or whatever. So these are the stuff to look for. What is the target? And we're back in, in trees, it's always the same. What is the target? What functionalities do I want there for? And how can I address it? And not only technically wise, as Valerie correctly says, but also on the census wise, which eases then the operation. Thank you. Next question from Lixian One. Could I say that these five senses are the field of human in the view of substance field? Could I say these five senses are the field? Uh, if you define one part of a substance field model as a human and the other part as something else. I would not combine the five senses. If, then I would take them separately. Um, and the reason for that is um, that you might change one sense 
maybe to the positive, and at the same time, put another sense into the negative. Um, you see this, for example, um, take the sense of, of uh, uh, visual, visual sense and the feeling sense. If you expose me to very high light, very high light, then my eyes will get on the borderline or even destroyed. And my, uh, but I will see or I see most, but on the other side, my skin is affected by the radiation that it's taking. So if, then I would say as uh, uh, one field, one sense, but I would not take them all together. I must admit, I, I'm just, yeah, generating this answer. I have not thought in that way up to now. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the comment from Anton Kazumeka, we use five human senses as a field in measuring problems in the yeah. view of substance field. Yeah, maybe. That can make sense. Although I must say, if you have a measuring problem, don't only take the five human senses. There are much more sen uh, information than you can get out if you're not saying a, a person does it, but a technology. Interestingly, it will be how we do it in, in future with uh, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, another question from Hammond Padikar. If, uh, I think maybe it's comment, if human is taken as, as one or object and engineering system as a tool, then the five senses can be taken as fields. I would say yes. Yeah. Vivi Narayan comments, I feel each sense has to be modeled separately. That's what I said before, yeah? I would not take them all together. But here again, um, you know, in terms of modeling, I often start on a higher level. I would, for example, say, okay, let's take the five senses that I have a first model. And then I differentiate it. Does it make really sense to have all five senses or should I separate it in two models one with hearing, one with, with uh, seeing or whatever. That's the analysis that I'm doing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I remember that today biologists consider that we have not five senses, but 27 senses. Yes, I know. I know. That's what why I said at the right? beginning, I'm taking the five senses that we all know from school. And as an example, I said equilibrium is also considered today as a supplementary sense, but I don't want to start into that discussion on that level uh, because the principle you can just go to also all the other senses. I've read once and I said, no, I don't think that this is a sense. I'm not sure about this. So I stick to, let's say, what is a solid basis? I took the five senses. Okay. Okay, our time is coming to the close. So Oliver, Thank you for a very insightful presentation. I'm sure that the audience love it. <laughs> and um, well, I wish everyone good luck. And uh, please uh, use census in your work, trees professionals. <laughs> okay, so on this note, we are closing down. Thank you very much. And thanks everyone who visited this webinar. Thank you very much, Valerie, for the moderation. Great job. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.